So ARM has announced some new CPU and GPU cores. I've got videos covering all the different aspects of the launch. In this video, I want to do a deep dive into the C1 Ultra. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so let's jump into this, the C1 Ultra and the C1 Premium, which are the successors to the Cortex X line, specifically the X925. So as I've mentioned in my other videos, there are now four CPU cores available. And today we're going to be looking at these two, the C1 Ultra and the C1 Premium, which are the successors to the Cortex X925. And remembering all of the CPU cores here are now ARM V9.3. So again, there is a whole variety of different ways these particular cores can be used. For example, in these last three uh, ones here, we've got one premium and three pro. You can have two premium and six pro, or of course you could even have two ultra, six pro. You could have two ultra, two premium, four pro. It really is up to the SOC maker how they want to configure these, but we've got these different high-end high performance CPU cores, flagship CPU cores that we're going to dive into now a bit deeper. So first of all, this is a year on year continuation of double digit IPC. So what's IPC? Instructions per cycle. That means it doesn't matter what CPU clock frequency you've got, it's going to be faster. So if last year's one was running at 3.6 gigahertz and this year's one's running at 3.6 gigahertz, then it's going to be 10 or 15% faster just because it's better designed. It's got a, a better design which enables it to do more in that same clock speed. And then of course, once you factor in new process uh, nodes, th second generation three nanometer, higher clock speed, you're going to get even more performance out of them. So this is a chart from ARM. All these charts I'm showing you today, of course, are from ARM as there's no actual devices out yet with any of this stuff in it. They're basically saying the C1 Ultra offers 1.2 times the performance of a 2024 premium Android competition. And competition there, you're basically talking about, uh, well, what Android competition is there? So it's not Samsung because Samsung were using ARM cores. Uh, MediaTek use ARM cores. So if anyone not using ARM designed cores, although they're using ARM compatible cores, is Qualcomm. So they're saying that the 2024 premium Qualcomm chip is one in this chip and 1.2 for the C1 Ultra. So they're saying a big leap over what's currently shipping from Qualcomm. And in fact, they're saying that the uh, Cortex X925 was actually already faster than that. And interestingly, they're also doing that in less area. Now, area has lots and lots of uh, connotations for price because you're going to need to pay for that silicon. It's an expensive process in the millions and millions of dollars. And so there are two competitors listed here, 25% and 80%. My guess is that this is Apple. This is Qualcomm. Just guesses. This is the Cortex X925, and they're showing how the die size is smaller in ARM's designs and yet with greater performance. Now, what changes have they made to the C1 Ultra? Well, you can divide the architecture of a CPU roughly into three major blocks. The front end, that means fetching and decoding the instructions, what you actually need to run. The actual pipeline, the core for uh, executing those instructions and then finally the back end that's the retirement on how you actually say right that's now done let's move on uh, to the next instruction so here at the front end the big things are the branch prediction are you able to c correctly guess what you need to bring in next so that the uh, the instructions are there ready to be fed down the pipeline for when you jump branch to that bit of code and also how well you can fetch those instructions in terms of the instruction cache and the bandwidth and so on. And here you can see they've made some changes to the branch predictor and to the instruction fetch with 33% increase in L1i cache available bandwidth. And this graph here basically shows you different workloads. The X axis here you can see there's no particular points on it but they're showing over different workloads these are some of the improvements and a zero percent improvement means it's the same as last year so not going down it's not negative it's the same as last year but in all these other cases you can get up to to a 20 percent reduction in the branch mispredicts now in the core what have we got we've got the out of window size has grown by 
20 uh, 5%. So that's up to 2K of instructions in flight. This is just mind boggling if you think about it. What's the out of order window size? When you're executing instructions out of order, and that means the CPU is deciding that it can do this instruction before this in other instruction, and the result will still be the same. And so it can then order them in the most efficient way that it wants to. It's now tracking up to 2K of instructions in flight, all going on at the same time, working out what order it should put them in, how it should deal with them, how they should be fetched, how they should be decoded, how they should be sent down the pipeline so that you get the maximum level of what? Instruction level parallelism. You want to be able to get to the end of the pipe and actually say, I want to do this uh, load instruction and I want to do this uh, uh, kind of this memory instruction. I want to be able to do this floating point unit instruction all at the same time because at the end of the pipeline, it's got multiple execution units and you want them all full all of the time. There's also some instruction elimination, particularly with these particular types of move instructions. They basically work out that they can uh, eliminate one instruction because actually they can do something else instead. Uh, and that just makes what's going down the pipeline slightly more efficient because there are less things going down the pipeline. And then at the back end, the third of our three different things, they've got uh, the L1 data cache capacity has been doubled. So for years, it's been 64K with ARM CPUs. That's now gone up to 128K. As I said, the out of order window has increased and that affects the back end as well. And there's been general improvements to the data fetchers. And again, here, the reduction in the back end stalls, again, showing different workloads. Zero means it's no better than the last year, but there's all these cases where they're demonstrating it's actually better this year, up to, what's that, just over 45%, which is pretty impressive. Now, this is probably the most important graph. Again, emphasizing these slides come from ARM, but this is basically talking about power and performance, which, of course, the big thing when it comes to, especially mobile uh, processors. So along here is the performance. More to the right you are, more over here you are, the more performance you have. So for example, if you've got the, uh, this one here is the uh, C1 Pro, okay, then that, that's the performance. The performance just comes here. It doesn't go all the way over to here. But the C1 Ultra goes all the way over to here. And the same with power. When you've got something that's more power efficient, let's say like the uh, Cortex-A725, then this is using the least amount of power. Uh, though looking at here, the C1 Pro uh, doesn't seem to use much more. And then the higher you go up here, the more power it's going to be using. So, of course, the point is you can crank up the power, 4.1 gigahertz. Remember, power is directly related to clock frequency. So the more power you're using, you're going to get more performance. But the point is you want these curves to be more to the right and lower. So if it's more to the right and lower, then you're going to get more performance and less power. And of course, that's what we see. Both of these two new curves for the C1 Ultra and the C1 Pro are below and to the right, the same curves for the X925 and the A75. And that's the great thing. To the right, lower, more performance, less power. And they've given it some numbers here. So you basically can actually get the same performance, okay, 28% less power. So that's the performance. To the right here is the performance. So we want exactly the same performance as the X925, I can do it in 28% less power. But I could also crank up the power, fair enough, I'm using more power, but I can get an extra 25% performance. So, you know, you can, this is all to do with what the SOC manufacturer wants, what the software is demanding, what the kernel, the scheduling is all asking for, what the demands of the app are, but it's, it's there. You can have the same performance at less power or more performance, uh, a greater performance than what was available before. So that's a very encouraging graph more to the right, lower down, that's what we're looking for. Now, just one slide about the C1 Premium, because the C1 Premium is basically the C1 Ultra, but it's actually tweaked for area saving. And that means that there are going to be some differences, for example, like the sizes of some of the caches, the way it's laid out lends itself to area saving rather than performance. So you can actually use a premium core and it will use 35% less area than an ultra. And my guessing is my calculations is probably a drop in IPC. So not so of course you could clock speed is a different thing as we talked about. Drop in IPC of maybe four or five percent. So the way they compare this is that actually if you had two premiums and six pros, 
that's a valid setup for a for a sub flagship tier smartphone uh, and compare that to the more traditional four plus four four pros and four nanos you're actually going to be getting 35 percent higher single threaded performance so basically the uh a premium core is 35 percent higher uh single thread performance compared to a pro so that's pretty uh, important to know and so we could see just devices with this kind of setup with just premiums no ultra cores and we could see some with ultra premium and pro or any combination we really are that basically the oems the socs makers have got such a uh, variety of what they can do it's going to be really interesting to see how they use them Okay, that's it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, then I invite you to stick around by subscribing to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.